Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Hurdy Burke Broadcast Network, and we are on our second podcast with Power Hour with Danielle Smith. As a matter of fact, uh, we're on our second podcast, as I just mentioned, and we have a group page on Facebook called the Power Hour Broadcast, Danny L. Smith. For those of you listening on demand, please go to the Facebook group, Power Hour Broadcast with Danny L. Smith, uh, and join that group. It's open to the public. You can listen to the first episode and the, and the future episodes coming up. Tonight, Danny's going to jump into the Law of the Lid. It's uh, based on John Maxwell's book, The Laws of Leadership. And did you know that leadership ability determines a person's level of effectiveness? Danny, thanks for being on and looking forward to the, what you're going to provide for us tonight. And you guys that are having to be listening in, uh, let's welcome Danny L. Smith. Thanks, Danny. Hey, Hardy. Thanks, man. Um, you know, this is uh, my favorite law. I know I said that last week, and uh, uh, I know I'm uh, going to get some I'm gonna catch some flack about that. But uh, I'm not covering. I don't have any plans that uh, on the power hour here. Then, the next year, the next 50 weeks plus whatever, however long we carry this out, of covering all of uh, the, the laws of leadership and the laws of growth. But uh, I do in, intend to uh, cover my favorite. Uh, we started last week with the law of the environment and the importance of that law of the environment. There are going to be some things coming up on the Facebook page uh, I've drafted uh, that we're going to be digging into all of these laws a little bit during the week uh, after my uh, – hey, Hurdy, I just thought yeah. about something. I had a lid on my leadership ability and not listening to you last week and trying to do Facebook Live at the same time I was recording the call. That was a lid that I I refused to pay attention to. So anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What's that? I said it happens and it's okay. Yeah. Uh, You know, that's the neat thing about – these laws and uh, the laws of growth, the laws of, of, of leadership, is it's about test, it's about evaluate. Uh, I've actually got something here. It's about uh, what uh, Paul Martinelli calls the cycle of success. Uh, we implement, we test until it fails. We're always trying to push it and push it and push it, right? So we implement, we test until it fails, we learn from it, we improve, and we re-enter, we re-implement. And uh, somebody asked me, so what are you going to do about the Facebook Live? And I said, I'm not going to do Facebook Live. Well, why not? Hurdy says not to. So uh, there we go. We get a, we get a good recording. <laughs> uh, if you've got the handout in front of you, uh, whether you're live or on the recording, by the way, if you're live and you want to ask a question, hit star six. You'll come into the queue. It's kind of like a digital uh, 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 raising your hand. I will notice that you're in the queue at some point, and I will um, recognize you and uh, we'll dialogue a little bit. So hey, jumping Annie, in. And, uh, yeah. Well, hold yeah. on. Hey, Annie, before you get started on that, tell them, let's say that we have our on-demand listeners coming back to this page. Where can they find this uh, handout if they don't grab it tonight? Where can they get it? Uh, it it's going to stay on the Facebook page, on the Power okay. Hour, your, your Power Hour Facebook page. It's, it's going to stay right there. Great. Uh, we will, uh, we're going to uh, offer, uh, hey, by the way, Hurdy, this is another, uh, one of my laws, what I call lathanetics. We'll discuss that uh, another time. But uh, it has to do with anything worth doing is worth doing even poorly until you can get better at it and learn to do it well. Uh, so we will have a, a sign-up where people can uh, put in their name and email address so that they get a weekly email from me. Uh, that's, that's forthcoming. Right now, just go to the Facebook page and download it right there. Under It's under forms. There's also a post about it uh, for today. Go back 
till last week, and there's a post there about that one. Or you you can go straight to forms and download it. Super. So, jump in here. Um, it, 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 I'm just going. Some of this is going to be me going over this form because um, yeah, I was working on these. I, I reviewed my notes yesterday, and uh, you know, one reason I love doing this, Hurdy, is because it reinforces the the laws in my head, my heart. Um, so for, uh, 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 things that I need to be paying attention to. Uh, that law of environment last week, man, I have taken so many notes in my journal, in my in my data, in, in my planner, uh, text to myself this week as I've recognized my environment. I'm I'm reading a book on Saturday. Next thing I know. I'm out, that that whole environment thing is encouraging me to get out and exercise more, all from a book that that I, that I was reading. It's been sitting on my bookshelf for about a month and just led to it. Okay, yeah, I'm going to read this book this weekend. Didn't I read about half of it, but it's, it's the law of the environment. Today, the law of the lid, you know, John says, the higher an individual's ability to lead, the higher the lid on his or her potential. The lower an individual's ability to lead, the lower the lid on his potential. I want to say that if you've been in any of my classes, I don't care if it's a sales and marketing class, the Stop Wasting Handshakes, the Grill of Marketing, the, uh, you know, one of the leadership lunch and learns, whether it's been on these phone calls or uh, over here at the Egg and I, uh, I work under the premise that everything is based upon leadership because leadership is nothing more, nothing less than influencing. If I'm posting on social media, I'm trying to influence. Consciously or subconsciously, it's influencing. Thus, I'm leading. Now, there's bad leading, there's good leading. I believe we're all leaders. Some are better some are worse than others. So the little diagrams there, John's got the effective, uh, uh, the effective, competent, or productive person without influence or leadership. Look at the difference right there. You know, you know somebody that's dedicated to success on the right versus their leadership ability they're, they've raised their leadership ability, therefore their, their success is higher. It, it, their effectiveness increases. We have to increase our leadership ability. And what John says is a higher the lid on his or her potential. Most of us don't re realize the opportunities that we have around us every day simply because our potential that we recognize, the potential that's, um, uh, that, that, that we think of about ourselves, it's just not high enough. A person's ability to, uh, uh, determines a person's level of effectiveness. Maxwell Maltz, in his book, Psycho-Cybernetics, some of you read that in college, one cannot long outperform one's self-image. If your self-image of your potential is not high enough, you're missing opportunities. You're not seeing those opportunities. Moving on to page two of the handout. So what is the lid, and I'm talking this in the first-person point of view. Some of this, well, how I want you to hear it is in the first-person point of view. What is the lid on my leadership? How do I determine how high or low it is? And there's, a, there's a chart right there on page two and page three of the handout, the 21 indispensable qualities of a leader. So you grade yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, character, charisma, commitment, communication, competence, courage, discernment, focus, generosity, initiative, 
listening, passion, positive attitude, problem solving, relationship, responsibility, security, self-discipline, servanthood, teachability, and vision. Hmm. Rank yourself what, what you feel is in each of those levels. There you are. Grade yourself, one being the lowest, ten being the highest, in each of those levels. Divide by 21 and you get your average. Simple enough, right? If you really want to know, give this to somebody that knows you real well. Somebody you work with, somebody that you live that you live with. They heard to give this to Yvonne. Let her grade you. Okay. Yeah. I'm not uh-huh. giving. By the way, I'm not giving it to Kathy. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. but, uh, <laughs> what's interesting is when you see your gap. Visiting with a business owner a while back, and he asked me about employee evaluations. What do I think about employee evaluations? And I said, well, it's not as much as what you think. Uh, you evaluate somebody. It's not much about what you think. It's about what they think and you think and the gap between the two areas and whatever areas that, you're, uh, that you feel you need to grade. Personally, I believe that, uh, that we need to grade uh, employees in two different ways. One is these qualities. The other is the qualities of a team member. Some of them are the same as this. I think about eight or nine are the same. There are 17 qualities of a team member, 21 qualities of a leader. So it's a great little uh, homework assignment here. Um, go down through here. Or it, so which of the qualities are your strength? Purdy, what's a, what's a strength you've got right there out of that? Which one would you pick that you're, that's a big strength for you of those 21 uh, qualities? Yeah, I would, I would say it's probably, uh, I don't know if the exact word for it's on there, but I would say, uh, the, the influence part, right? The, the ability to uh, to help others um, uh, is kind of my strength, right? Mm-hmm. I would say that. Yeah, um, uh, servanthood. Just call it servanthood. You're a huge servant. You're you're huge in, in serving others. To the sometimes detrimental to your own uh, pocketbook, I believe. Well, that's my way. And, <laughs> There's your lid. There we go. Okay, we can hang up. Are we done? Okay. We're done. Uh, so, uh, you know, we each need to ask ourselves the qualities, which of the qualities are our strengths. And as you focus on those strengths, there becomes your greatest impact goes to the uh, fascinate assessment that Sally Hogshead has uh, uh, has come up with. Now, I'm a it's, catalyst. It's a, it, Danny, I'm a catalyst well, in her program. Just, yeah, just, it, and, you know, that there is an incredible – I'm going to put everybody on hold here a second – Um, is, you know, there's most assessments are all about how we see the world and how we think people see us. The Sally Hogshead assessment is about, the Sally Hogshead assessment is about how the world sees you. And as we develop our strengths, we're going to have a greater impact not just on other people, but how other people work and see us. So uh, here's some things. And by the way, I'm going to be uh, reposting. I've got two um, uh, errors here on this page. And, Herdy, thank you for telling me this. Keep it live. Keep it real. Just keep moving. Um, so the, the things that we can do to raise our lid, things we can do to raise our lid, one, reflect on experiences, 
Two, build ourselves out in front of where we are. Three, invest in training. Four, invest in a mentor. Five, invest in a coach. I'm going to come back to these a little bit. Join a mastermind or focus group. I'm going to put a little plug for you in here, Herdy. Like your business warriors group that you've got, uh, the next group starts. Uh, that's a one-year-long program, right? It starts right. a week, week from tomorrow. Uh, do right. something beyond yourself. Do it afraid. Most of us are fearful of doing things, so we don't do it. Just, we just need to do things afraid. Reflect on who's been a lid lifter in your life. What characteristics made them a, li- a, a lid lifter? Who's a lid lifter in your life? Think about that right now. Write, write down right now. Somebody's in your past that's been a lid lifter. Who, whose lid have you lifted? You know what I didn't do, Hurdy, right up front? I didn't talk about really what a lid. You know, we all have lids. John talks about his lids. John Maxwell talks about his lids. We yeah. all have lids. And, uh, uh, and if most of us work at about a 60%, 70% of our lid, uh, 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 of our max lid on a daily basis. So if if my lid is uh, uh, in uh, social media is at a six, I'm really only working at uh, what's sixty uh, percent of six. I'm really wa- only working at three point six on a daily basis. I push myself and I bump up at a six. Uh, negotiations. If my lid is a uh, and I'm not good at negotiating. My lid is a five. I'm only working at a three on a day-to-day basis, and, I, and I'll push that lid to a five. If my lid uh, uh, on following somebody is at a, uh, at a seven, following you is at a seven, I'm going to work, you know, let's, you know six, about 4.2, four, uh, you know, maybe a five, but, but I'm going to reach my lid to some point of following you and following you well. The deal is, how do I become, how do I raise my lid? Well, it happens through spaced repetition. It happens through training. It happens through what I'm listening to, who I'm hanging out with, what I'm watching, what I'm reading. My lid increased for a short period through this book I was reading this weekend. The name of the book is Living with a Seal, about this guy that um, did a 24-hour race. Now, he and Three others were running 20 minutes at a time. It was a relay. You run 20 minutes and you rest uh, for an hour, and run 20 minutes and rest for an hour, 24 hours. And it was a this Navy SEAL turned out to be a Navy SEAL who who did the whole race for solid 24 hours with no sleep. Okay, and uh, so reading that book, he then hired the guy to come live with him in 30 days. Hilarious book. Uh, is a little bit colorful in the language, so uh, I'll give that disclaimer right there. Um, but uh, it's an incredible book. It raised my lid in some areas and got me thinking about some things I hadn't thought about in a long time. So, but, but was it a permanent raise? No. We're, it's never a permanent raise unless we're working through the process of constantly raising that lid. Life is constantly trying to put a lid on what we're doing. Be a lid lifter of others and make a stop doing list. We can't do everything, okay? <laughs> yep. Can't do everything. Um, one suggestion out of the book is describe a time in your life when you were stuck and someone or something challenged you to look at the situation differently. I, I'm. It... Um, trying to reframe an example in my mind without getting personal here, um, but if you can always use me, yeah. If um, too many times we come to a call like this, we come to a training. Um, well, I'm on a call. I'm, I'm on. Uh, I, I'm in a program that's uh, eight classes. 30 minutes twice a week for four weeks, a man named Michael Mayer leading us through 
um, uh, he and uh, one of his coaches leading us through uh, some, uh, uh, some teachings out of the book, 7L, the seven levels of communication. Uh, you and others that have been in my Stop Wasting Handshakes and Gorilla Marketing for Realtor stuff, I use his pyramid in there, um, it, it's communication pyramid. But if I would go into that class and it's 30 hard minutes, last Monday, Friday, today, and then, you know, um, uh, i got five more of these things. If I went in that going, I don't like that, yeah, I like that, I don't like that, yeah, I like that, I wouldn't learn anything. I'd wasted my money for taking his class. I have to go into and he's got a couple of things in there. Uh-uh. Talking about doing housewarming parties for clients that I've closed on. Doing a housewarming party. Are you kidding me? I don't want to do a housewarming party. That's not my thing. You see me doing a housewarming party, Hurdy? No. You know, we'll take them out to the lake and we'll teach them how to barefoot. How about that? Yeah, okay? you, you, it, you know, you know I, but I don't want to do a housewarming party. doesn't matter what I, I, I want to do. might be what I should be doing, what I need to do. So I haven't decided to do a housewarming party. But I'm asking myself, what if I did? What if I did want to do a housewarming party? Now, that's a common thing through a lot of stuff that we talk about is, what if you did? You go to my websites, and there's a little caption up there, what if you did? The, trying to, it, the idea is to get us out of our comfort zones. Because our comfort zone, if we want more, we have to be, and if, if we have to do more. To do more, we have to be more. We can't just stay where we're at. We have to build ourselves out in front. We have to lift our lids. Now, next week we might be talking about, hadn't decided yet, but we might be talking about the law of process. Sometime in the next three weeks we will be talking about the law of the process because you can use the process and, and, and make the process work for you. We have to have a process to move from where we are now to where we want to be. But we can't, you know, get more. We can't be more without doing more. What got us where we're at is not going to get us where we want. We ha- Something has to change. If you're going to if, uh, look up Abraham Maslow's um, uh, hierarchical of needs, and it's in essence of what he's saying right there. We have to, uh, to to have more, to be more, we have to change. We can't just think something's going to be different, okay? Uh, so, Danny, hey, I'm going to interrupt yeah. you for a sec. So, um, getting out of that comfort zone, uh, where does um, – through your evaluation on uh, uh, having somebody evaluate you that you're close to that knows you, where does the explore for uh, the exploring uh, part of that come into it? How to figure out, you know, what you can do outside that comfort zone, right? Well, uh, you know, let's see if this if, if, uh, let me see if this answers your question. If I've got it, got your question right, but uh, if let me go back to uh, someone that was visiting with about a year ago. They took the Fascinate assessment, and they said, this is not me. And I said, it's not? No, I'm not lying. I don't see myself as this. <laughs> and I asked him a few more questions, and and and, uh, and it, I mean, eventually came around to it, I had to point out to him, this isn't about how you see yourself. This is how other people see you. So the uh, same thing with this little assessment here. You grading yourself, Hurdy, on, on qualities, having somebody else grade you, you mm-hmm. and it's not about, you know, agreeing or disagreeing. Right. It's about what each have to say. And if each person has to say, you know, if somebody says that 
<laughs> you're horrible at, at serving others, and and you think you're a, you're an eight. They think you're a two. You have to consider what makes them think that. Yeah. All right. What have I done to that? Okay. Oh, all right. And then go. Okay. Uh, I mean, some it's blind spots. We have blind spots, or they're they're called blind spots because we can't see something from where we're setting. You're driving down the road, and we have a blind spot in your mirror. You have to move. Or somebody honks at you, or, or uh, uh, Yvonne screams at you, but that somebody's in that lane. It takes somebody else showing you a blind spot, or it takes you moving and looking at something differently. Yep. Okay. To to see that blind spot, and many times that's what it is. I come home one time. This is about ten years ago. And I, I, I like assessments, taken many of them, have pushed them on to people and used them with, uh, with employees. I come home one time and I told Kathy, I said, man, I found an assessment I, that I just don't agree with. And this was with Profiles International and their assessments. And, and uh, we had a, I paid them a couple of thousand dollars a month for unlimited use of their assessments with our uh, four or 500 employees. And so we ran a lot of assessments. And, uh, and I said, I got one, not going to be using that anymore. She said, why? I said, well, it's a team player assessment. And you take our um, uh, individual, uh, I, let's say it's a disc. It wasn't a disc. It's something else. But, you know, uh, you say uh, all of our, ind- whoever's on a team, you take their individual disc and, uh, and assign it to a team, and then it runs the evaluation on the team. And I said, she said, well, so that, that sounds pretty good. And I said, well, it said I wasn't a good team player. She goes, pardon me? She said, well, it, it said I wasn't a good team player. Whether I'm in there as the team leader, I'm in there as a team player, or one of the players on the team, I'm not a good team player. And she says, and what do you have a problem with? <laughs> and I said, babe, listen to me. It says I'm not a good team player. And you don't like it because of that? And I said, well, yeah. She said, "What point in time did you come to real? Did you come to think you were a good team player?" <laughs> it, I, I, I'm serious. I had no idea that people thought I wasn't a good team. I went back to work the next day, and we'd had a meeting. About uh, there, about eight of us been in this meeting and talking about it. I went back the next day and I called everybody in there. I said, "Okay, this thing says I'm not a good team player." Do y'all agree with this? Yep, they did. <laughs> I thought I was a great team player. Totally disrupted my whole day. I thought I'd have to go home and take a nap or go back to bed. And so let's do this. Um, again, any calls, a welcome to, uh, to jump in. Uh, uh, hit star six and uh, jump into the queue. If not, we're going to be finishing early today. Uh, but on a, here's an assignment. On a sheet of paper, turn it sideways in the landscape mode, mode and draw a line across the middle of the paper from one edge to another. You know what? I got the instructions backwards, uh, but uh, I'll fix that. Uh, so those of you on the call, on the... Um, on the left side, write the day you graduated high school on the left side. On the right side, put 2027. Now, in the very middle of that, so I graduated high school in uh, 1973 and 27, so that's uh, – well, that's that's interesting. Is that 2000? So in year 2000, so right in the middle of the paper is 2000. Now you put today's date in the appropriate spot through there. Okay? So 17. So 6 of 17, just, just a month, okay. Now then, and this is an assignment for you if you choose to uh, to take it on. 
Now, fill in other defining dates. It, it, it just, it's just not going to be perfect match. You don't need to put it on uh, Excel spreadsheet, though I've seen people do it. Put the day you graduated college, if you did, the day you were married, your children were born, uh, 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 big job changes, and just start, just, just start putting dates through there and labeling them what they are. Above the line write successes that you've achieved and the appropriate dates. And mainly all of these other dates, such as graduation, being married, children, new jobs, uh, maybe a date that you got your first brand new car, any date that pops to mind, put it on there. And, and those dates, those, they start off with, those are just memory joggers. It's the rest of the – they could be important to the overall exercise, but – uh, but uh, the main thing is to is uh, the next thing we're going to do. It, 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 what I said there, above the line, write successes you achieved in the appropriate spots, and then below the line, in relationship to those successes, write which qualities helped you in that success. So the qualities from page two and three, r write what qualities serve you through that process, mm -hmm. okay? Now, the most important thing, really, is for you to remember your successes. Remember also, this is not on the, uh, here's what environment were you in? Go back to last week's lesson, uh, and you, uh, you know, what music did you listen, used to listen to? I can look at these books on my bookshelves and think about a book and where I was when I first uh, started reading Blackaby. Uh, I can think about where I was when I read The Good Life by Chuck Colson. I have an idea of that. I could probably open the book up and there's a date in there. So go through that. The uh, uh, Jim Collins book, Built to Last and Good to Great, about both of them at the same time. They laid uh, uh, on the floor almost more or less under my bed for a year before I picked them up, and then I was astonished what great books that they were. And, uh, and why hadn't I read those books before? And I think back to that time in my life. So just use these things as memory joggers to, uh, 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 to, uh, to recreate some creativity that was likely going on in your lives during that period of time, when you achieve those successes, and thus you, your, your lid will start bumping up a little bit. That lid will start raising. The thing is, is to capture it, and it takes a lot of space repetition. There's a great book about space re repetition called No K N O W, No Can Do by Blanchard and uh, we'll get the other two uh, authors right now. But no, here it is right here. Uh, it's, by, uh, and it's actually listed on Amazon. On, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Ken Blanchard, Paul Meyer, and uh, Rick Ruby. I think that's the last name of the other guy, or QB. And um, I can, that book is about space repetition, doing things repetitively but spacing it out. Okay, um, that's part of what we teach in our Stop Wasting Handshakes program. You got to build relationships. You space things out. To learn things, you space things out uh, 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 so that it becomes, uh, you know, you know, part of your DNA, if you will. 